All right, second video. So, if you watch the Atomic Symbols video, carry on here. If not, please go watch the Atomic Symbols video first. We're going to continue on with the atom and what we need, why we need to know all the pieces that make it up. So, when we think about an atom, let's go back to helium. Let's look at helium three and helium four. Protons in each of them, well, they're helium, so there are two protons in each. Neutrons in each of them, well, helium-3 has three total things in its nucleus. Two of them were protons, so there's one left. Three minus two equals one. One left to be a neutron. For helium-4, there are four things in the nucleus, four minus two, there's two left over, there are two neutrons. And in terms of electrons, well, they both have no charge, so they must have as many electrons as protons. So two positives and two negatives means that there are no extra positives or negatives. Well, when we think of building these atoms, I've got a proton, a neutron, a proton, and two electrons around them. Verse proton, two neutron, proton, and two electrons. When you add more things to an atom, well, things have mass. They get heavier. A proton and a neutron are just about the same mass. But an electron is one ten thousandth or so. So more electrons doesn't really change the mass, but more protons and neutrons do. So when we look at these two, we actually think about helium-3 as having three atomic mass units. Where helium-4 has four, and we shorten them, A, M, U, atomic mass units. The idea is just more protons and more neutrons means more weight. So if I had 10 things that were all helium-3, so 10 times helium-3, well that would be 10 times 3 for 30 atomic mass units. But if I had 10 things and they were each helium-3, four, sorry, helium, I wrote hydrogen, or helium three. If I had 10 things that reach helium four, that would be 10 times four for 40 atomic mass units. So you could have two containers of the exact same number of helium atoms, but depending on what isotope you have, they would weigh different amounts. Well, additionally, if you mix them, what if I had five of them that were helium-3 and five of them that were helium-4. Well, five times three plus five times four, so 15 plus 20, 35 atomic mass units. If I have a mix of the two, I get a weight that is a mix of the weights. In fact, if I average this, each helium looks like it's 3.5 atomic mass units. Why this is important is when you have a bunch of an atom, your mass is the average of the different isotopes. Like you have to deal with how many of each isotope you have. So this makes it hard to weigh out specific amounts of atoms. And unfortunately, that's what we have to do. If I have carbon and I'm going to react it with oxygen so that I can make carbon dioxide, right? Say you had something like charcoal, so nothing but pure carbon. I burn it in the air and it makes carbon dioxide. Well, for every single atom of carbon, I need one molecule of O2. 
in order to make one molecule of CO2. I can't have one and a half molecules of oxygen. I can't have three. I can't have one. I mean, a half. I need exactly this. When atoms combine, they do it by number. None of our scales, none of our weighing devices count atoms. They tell us weight. They tell us grams or pounds. So I need to have a ratio of how much an atom weighs for how many atoms. We call this the mole. Remember that one mole, it's one of our units, was 6.022 times 10 to the 23 things. Like, this is like saying one dozen is 12. Right? Or one century is 100. That is, it's just a word for a large number of things, but this is how many things you have to have before you were on the human scales when you're working with atoms. If you had this many hydrogen atoms, it would weigh one gram. If you had one mole of hydrogen atoms, that is one gram of hydrogen. So it takes an enormous number of atoms before you're on the human scale. This is why we work with the mole. It's just kind of simpler to discuss. Well, let's think back to the periodic table. So let's go back. If we go and look at hydrogen, let's blow it up a little bit, and we see the atomic symbol. Down below it, you will notice a series of four or five numbers, depending on your periodic table. And the other ones have it. Lithium says 6.938. Beryllium says 9.010 or 0, 1, 2, 2. sodium is 22.990. They all have some number underneath them. What that number is, is the mass in grams for one mole of that element. So hydrogen is 1.0079. Zero seven nine. Helium was four point zero zero. If you look up carbon again, carbon is twelve point zero one. That number underneath that is the mass, so the grams for every one mole. So like I said, if you had one mole of hydrogen, it weighs just about one gram. There's a little bit extra though. What that actually comes from is when I had hydrogen, remember there was H1, but there's also some H2 and there's actually a little H3 on Earth. The vast majority is H1. One proton, one atomic mass unit. But there's just a little bit of H2 and a really tiny little bit of H3. And so they raise the average a little above one. When you find hydrogen on Earth, it comes as a mix. They have been mixing for four and a half billion years. It is already mixed up. So you get 99.99% hydrogen one. You get 0, 0.00. .00 you know, 7% hydrogen 2 and you get 0 0.003 or less percent hydrogen 3. In fact, it is quite a bit less in reality. But that little bit of heavier elements raises our weight just very slightly above 1. And what we find is that the average mass that you need for one mole on Earth is actually slightly above 1. So all of those weights on the periodic table, all of those numbers underneath the symbol, 
we have already done the math for the percentages on Earth. Carbon is mostly carbon-12, but with a very little amount of carbon-13 and carbon-14. So its average is slightly above 12. Helium on Earth is all basically exclusively helium-4. So it's spot on right about 4.00. Other elements, some are spot on. If you look at oxygen, it's 16.00 in most books. Uh, but if you look at something like sulfur, just below it, sulfur is 32.06. It has a little bit of manipulation to raise it due to some isotopes. This is actually different on every planet. If we ever go to Mars and we set up chemistry, we will have to have a periodic table of the elements on Mars. We will actually have different averages on different places. This is actually really useful because when meteorites crash to Earth, we will actually take it. If we find them, we'll sample to see what the isotope mixture is. And so if we find it has a bunch of carbon, we'll measure the average weight of carbon and we'll find if it's a little bit higher, it must have come from this one planet. If it's a little bit lower, it must come from a different one. In fact, there's an entire class of meteorites where they test the carbon because somewhere billions of years ago, a massive collision happened in the solar system, broke off billions and billions of small rocks from the same object, and those keep crashing to Earth to this day. So we can test them all, and we can say, hey, even though these are spread out over millions of years on Earth, they all came from the same object. They've just been falling down on us slowly over time. Well, what do we do with these atomic masses? When we want to talk about a chemical, so let's go back and talk about CO2. If I was to try to collect CO2, well, we can only weigh it. We can't count it. So I might weigh it and find I have some certain mass, but how many CO2s is that? I need to know the number so I can react it with things. Because remember, reactions, atoms combine by number, not by mass. So what we generally do is we use the mole. We say, I want one mole of CO2. Well. There's a bunch of different CO2s, but each of them comes with one carbon. So that means I have one mole of carbon total, but each of them comes with two oxygens. So if I have one molecule, I get two oxygens. If I have 10 molecules, I get 20 oxygens. And if I have a mole of molecules, I get two moles of oxygen. Well, the mass of a molecule is just the sum of the masses of its elements. So the, you know, if I have a three pound weight and two five pounds and I add them together, I just add them up. So whatever the mass of carbon is plus whatever the mass of the two oxygens are, I just add them together. Well, carbon was 12.01, and we have one of it, so 12.01 times 1, 12.01 from carbon. Oxygen was 16.00, but we have two of them, so 32.00. And then I just add them together. So 1, 0, 4, 4. If I wanted to talk about how much a mole of carbon dioxide weighed, CO2, it is 44.01 grams for one mole. It is just the sum of the individual atom masses. Let's do another example for that. Let's have CH4. I want a molecular mass. So the question is find molecular 
mass. What is the mass for one mole of this molecule? That is what it's asking you. Well, that means I want one mole of CH4. Well, CH4, for every atom of CH4, there's one carbon. So if I have a mole of them, there is one mole of carbon. And for every molecule, I have four hydrogens. So if I had 10 molecules, I'd have 10 times 4, 40 hydrogens. If I have one mole of them, I have four mole of hydrogen. Let me do the math. I can say, well, carbon is 12.01, and I have one of it. 12.01. Hydrogen is 1.0079 times 4. Um, I'm going to roughly estimate that. So that's going to be 4.032 ish. That's a little rounded, but that's about what it'll be for the total of all the hydrogens. Add them together. I'm going to get 16.042 grams per mole. Methane is 16.042 grams in one mole. So if I wanted to react methane with something, I could figure out just how many methanes I had by finding this molecular mass. Because what it really gives us it gives us a ratio. It gives a ratio of mass and number. And we can use this to do other calculations later. But for now, I want you to practice finding molecular mass. So try it for water. Try it for NaHCO3. And try it for C6. H12, O6. See if you can add up those molecular masses. Go ahead and pause, give it a shot, and then come on back. All right, you were able to give it a shot. Let's look at water. If I want the molecular mass for water, well, it's two times hydrogen and it's one times oxygen. So that's going to be 2 times 1.0, I'm going to round, so 0, 8, and it's going to be 1 times 16.00. So this is going to be 2.016 plus 16, so it's going to be 18.016 grams per mole, or very close, if you, if you use the slightly little bigger slightly more accurate hydrogen, it might be a little bit different. It uh, might be like 18.0158 or so. But as long as you're close to this, that's the right idea. You added two hydrogens and one oxygen together. Sodium bicarbonate, well, sodium, I have one of it, and they are 22.99 each. Hydrogen, I had one of it, and it's one point. 008. Carbon, I had one of it, and it's 12.01. And oxygen, I had three of it, and it's 16.00. Add them all up, you should get something around 84. Point, what's that come out to be? 84.0. About there. It's going to be 84, sorry, I don't have my calculator. It's going to be 84-ish grams per mole. So if you get a slightly more accurate answer, thank you, but that, that's what it's going to come close to be. And then the final one, I have carbon. Six times carbon at 12.01. I have hydrogen 12 times hydrogen at 1.008. And oxygen... I have 6 times 16.00. It should come out about 180.015-ish grams per mole. 
So that is how you take the periodic table, find the individual masses for each of them, for each of the elements. So carbon 12.011 on this periodic table I'm using. But you take those individual atomic masses for one mole, combine them in however many number the atoms in your molecule are in order to find out how much your molecule weighs for one mole. And we will use this for the entire quarter. So if you have extra questions, bring them with you to the next class. But for now, that is our section on using the periodic table to find the molecular masses of various compounds and where those molecular masses come from, or sorry, where the atomic masses actually come from. Now remember, they are the average of the mixture of isotopes that element has on Earth. All right, and thank you for this one. See you guys later.